So the other style of bias binding that's you would find commonly would be where the binding is stitched along the edge of the fabric and then it is folded back. And so often it's called a bias facing, but that the on the inside that there would be a bias um, binding there, finishing it like a facing. And then you can either um, machine stitch or hand stitch finish depending on, on the fabric and the style of the garment and what's appropriate. So be sure and line up the um, edge of this bias binding which has a crease. Measure that seam allowance there on that which would be um, in this case 0.75, often it's 0.5. And then you must know the seam allowance that you're working with on your garment. In this case it's 1.5. So if I place my measuring tape down there to find 1.5. This is the position where I can place this creased line. So the edges of the bias binding and the edge of the fabric won't necessarily line up. So it's important to take time to measure both and get them lined up correctly. When they are lined up correctly, you can pin along, pin the bias binding into position like this. Again, I'm placing the pins in a perpendicular direction so they will be easier to pull out when I sew as I'm imagining my stitching to be going this way. So my binding is now pinned into position and I'm going to stitch right along that crease line. my binding is stitched on into position and I would be able to fold it over and like that it would be used like a hem facing. Alternatively you could use the binding and sandwich it like that and have another um, style of binding finish where the binding shows a bit like this one but it isn't top stitch so it'd be kind of a nicer finish. I have now pressed this seam open which is important to remember to do at every stage of, of sewing always press and now I can turn this up uh, pin it along and have it be ready to st stitch. So now, in this case, for the example, I have a blue bias binding on a kind of cream fabric. So you wouldn't usually have that. That wouldn't usually be the case. You would usually have the fabric matching, the sort of the bias binding fabric would match the outer fabric. Um, and as you can see with the blue, it's slightly peeping over the edge, which we wouldn't want. We'd really want to make sure we've pinned it right, like roll it with your fingers, just the tiniest bit, just to ensure that nothing is peeping out. If you have the same colour bias binding um, as your fabric, then it shouldn't matter if a tiny bit peeps out by mistake. So often you can make the binding out of the actual fabric you're using, that would be the best. So now it's pinned and you can see it's slightly rolled it under so that the blue will not peep out. So I will again stitch on the top on the outside rather than underneath because the stitching from the top thread is much nicer. So if this is the outside in the front of the garment we want the nice stitching to be here on the outside. It does mean you can't necessarily, in this case you can actually see through because the blue binding is, is shading the fabric so it kind of is handy. But a lot of time you wouldn't be able to. You'd be sewing blind there. So you need to get your measurement maybe on your machine, find out what the measurement is across there. In this case, it's say um, two and a half centimeters. And find that mark on the machine and use that as your guide for the stitching. So the two and a half centimeter mark on this machine is here. 
So I'm putting the edge of my fabric just a millimeter inside that. I want to be sure to catch the edge of that binding as I stitch. stitched there that's the inside stitched along and that's the outside